Today we create a beautiful 3D cutting board from three types of nut wood. Enjoy! This project was mainly intended to test out the capabilities of my new sliding table saw. For the board we need a bunch of 30 degree angled pieces. Since I do not trust integrated angle measurements at all, I went for a variation of a so-called Fritz and Franz jig with a 30 degree slope. CNCing some plywood made quick work of accurately getting the angle done and now I just needed to install a piece of acrylic which was used to make it slide accurately and parallel to my saw blade. Fitting perfectly! Nice! After quickly cutting off the excess wood from the chick, I wanted to test it out and see if I could get an accurate hexagon. And as you can see, it worked out splendidly. Now for the main project. For my cutting board that I call <laughs> these nuts, I went with some satin walnut, also called ember wood, some European walnut turning planks, as well as some sweet chestnut. The test pieces I cut had perfect measurements for my purposes, so I applied the thickness and width to my solid wood too. Then I went over to my trusty band saw by Laguna and proceeded to resaw and cut my blanks and plank to size. And before setting up the fence on my table saw, I had to cut all the pieces to a 30 degree angle on one side. Once done, I adjusted my fence such that the distance between the saw blade resulted in all sides of the parallelogram shaped pieces to be equal. That's what we mathematicians call a rhomboid by the way. This process took quite a while and could definitely be done more efficiently by using my miter saw and a stub block, but as mentioned before I simply want to try out the capabilities of my new table saw this time around. So I took the time and went through all the cutting action on this power tool. Next, I proceeded to sand off a tiny bit of tear out by hand, such that we won't get any gaps between the pieces once gluing them together. And then came the most time consuming, annoying and also hardest part. That one wasn't a pleasure at all to be honest, but it had to be done. After pairing the tiles, I tried my best to glue them together. I did not have C8 glue back then at my shop, so I had to get creative and use painter's tape and a bunch of little clamps and bigger clamps to apply approximately even pressure to all hexagons. Surprisingly enough though, that worked out fairly well and once the glue was cured, I had to remove the whole mess from the polygons of degree 6. That took ages yet again and wasn't a process that I particularly enjoyed to be honest. 
Peeling tape and glue off is in normal case pretty satisfying, but this one wasn't. It really wasn't. Everything sticked together and it was a huge mess. Never mind the struggles and let's forget all the whining here, let's get back to business. Getting rid of glue squeeze out at the corners with a file. I then laid out the pattern one last time and got to the final glue up, which wasn't as hard as the one before. Luckily enough, everything slid in place fairly well. Next day rolled around and after removing all the clamps I roughly cut off the overhanging prisms from one side such that I could have a reference surface for my upcoming table saw cuts. Then I had a pretty easy time on my table saw getting all sides nice and square by cutting the board to its final dimensions. Next came flattening one surface with my trusty shape poco CNC. And after that I let the opposite side go through my planner. Both tools in combination really make a quick job of this procedure and I'm pretty glad about that. The board still had some tiny gaps where the glue up wasn't 100% perfect. So I wrapped some tight bond into those gaps and sanded it with an 80 grit without the random orbital attached to my shop bag. This is very important here. This way I was able to fill all the gaps with extremely fine wood dust. And to finish all the rough work off, I went over to my router table and chamfered all the edges with a 45 degree chamfer bit. And we are about to be done. I finally send it all the way from an 80 grit up to a 320 grit. Then I water pop the surface with a wet piece of cloth and send it again from 180 grit to 320 grit until the surface was as smooth as Daddy's hairy legs. And here comes the moment we've all been waiting for. Let us butter that bitch and see how the crane is going to shine. Also, since I'm a foot fetishist at heart, I also decided to add some rubber feet to this fine individual. And then it was complete. Here's the final reveal. I have to say that this one turned out really well. I'm very satisfied with the result and you can see the 3D effect quite clearly um, if you take a look at the money shots at the very end. Yes, I'm very pleased with the result. I was kind of afraid that you wouldn't notice the 3D effect too much just because of the hardwood of the um, ember wood, but um, overall that turned out very nicely. If you're wondering what that finish was that I was using, it was a mix of mineral oil and also beeswax. It's one of my most favorite finishes next to shellac that I also mix for myself, so these are on par. Um, really depends on the on the application for cutting boards. This cutting board butter you could say is just absolutely perfect and a separate video on this mixture is going to come out in a few days from now. Once it's out you can find a link down there in the description. But I hope you did enjoy the video about these nets. <laughs> I really like the 
the name of the cutting board. Here, apart from a few little um, irregularities and also inaccuracies, um, I have to say that it turned out very nicely. There are a few things that could have been done better and more efficiently. For example, instead of using my new table saw, I should have used the miter saw in instead. So once this goes into production, you can now purchase this cutting board over on Stamage.eu, by the way. Link down in the description too. Um, I'm probably going to use the miter saw. I just want to see how well the table saw is going to work for this kind of project and it worked out very nicely. Um, also, there, there are one or two other things that I should take care of next time. For example, on the sweet chestnut, you are going to notice that most of these have the same grain direction going upwards. And since the grain is so visible on the sweet chestnut, I should have made sure that um, on all the sweet chestnut um, tiles, the grain should be upwards. Like, for example, here and there, the grain doesn't move upwards. It doesn't bother me, but it's a nice little detail that I should take care of next time around. But I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. I hope you learned something new, especially when it comes to this kind of table saw that I'm using at the moment. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, why not make sure to subscribe to the channel as well as to check out Stimage.eu to support the channel in some kind of way. I hope you are going to stay safe even during Rona-chan and until the next video I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!